Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos related to geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. In today's session on population geography, we are going to learn about one of the very interesting topics that is related to population composition and population characteristics. So here in this lecture, we are going to learn about the age sex composition, rural urban composition, literacy and also the occupational structure across the world and India in terms of population composition and population characteristics. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about population composition and characteristics and age sex composition, rural urban composition, literacy based composition and occupational structure based composition is what we are going to learn under this topic. Now first of all when we say population composition it basically means what? It means that there is a structure that we need to understand because it varies over space and time. That's where geography is important here. That population geography is not just about population structure or demographics. It's about the spatial and temporal component of this structure. So population composition in simple ways it refers to the characteristics of population in which distribution by age, sex holds the utmost importance and apart from that the distribution by rural, urban, literacy, occupational structure also holds importance. So furthermore if you observe these points people of any country they are diverse in many respects. So what happens here? Each person is a unique entity in his self or herself, right? So in his her own way, they are unique and people can be distinguished, identified by these aspects of their identity. So age, sex and their place of residence. So if you have seen the survey of India collecting data, what do they do? They collect all these vital statistics data, right? That's why it becomes really important to understand under population composition and characteristics. Some of the other distinguishing attributes if you observe are occupation, education and life expectancy, right? So this is what we talk about the composition and characteristics. Now further what we observe is the first one that is age structure. When we say age sex composition, the first is age structure and age is very important biological characteristic as we know, right? So United Nations, UN, defines this particular age of individual as the estimated or calculated, look at the words here, estimated or calculated interval of time between the date of birth and the date of the census. That's important to understand. So DOB and DOC, this is where the age is right? So age structure is expressed in this particular way. Now age structure of a population is important. Why? Because it determines the number of persons available for different social categories across. So for instance, if you want the size of labor force available in a population depends upon its age structure. So it's very important for economy, right? Planning for various social and physical amenities also depends upon the age structure. So what do we require if we want to plan? We require the age data, age structure. So what you observe here, a large size of population in the age group of 15 to 59, what does it indicate? It indicates a large working population, right? If a greater population is above 60 years, it means what? Aging population is more in that particular nation or country, right? So requires more expenditure on healthcare facilities. So this is how we say that it is an indicative of many things related to social, cultural and associated physical amenities and infrastructure, right? So it is a whole structure that is important to understand. So high proportion of young population in a country means the country is youth. It has a lot of potential. As we say, India has a huge youth population. So we have huge youth dividends to reap. That's what we learn from age structure. Now, if you observe the measurements of this age structure, there are various ways to understand it. One of the simple ways is age pyramid. If you observe these pyramids, this is the data of 1961 and this is the data of 2011 census of India. Now observe these structures. What you find? 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, all these categories are having a broad base, right, in 1961. But now the broad base is shifted a little up. It means the youth population has the major share in the entire age structure. So we say that the earlier portion, the people in younger age were more. Now youth is more. 
and when you say youth population is more it means that we have a lot of potential here so that is one way to just represent through these pyramids now the next one is called dependency ratio why is this important understand the dependency ratio the word itself is dependent population their ratio it means that population which is dependent on the working population so number of dependents in the population for every hundred working persons is the simple way of understanding it so if you want to calculate what we know children below age of 15 years and people above 60 years these are mostly the dependent ones so in between 15 and 60 is the general trend that we observe that these are the most working people so the rest of them are dependent on the middle people right so dependency ratio is also calculated using this formula if you observe here right so this formula can be utilized then we have index of aging as well now this was by Peterson, it was calculated in 1975. This is one of the method to calculate the age structure, which is index of aging. So population at 65 years of age by population 0 to 14 years of age into 100. So this percentage. So these are certain ways in which we keep evaluating. And as per the context, as per the purpose we use it, it depends upon what is our purpose of study, what is our purpose of research, why are we looking into age structure, for what purpose. So that's where we look into these particular measures. Now if you observe, there is another way of looking at like this. This is the typical what you say is population pyramids for various countries. So rapid growth population pyramid looks like this if you observe. So this base you see the blue color. The blue color is ages 0 to 14. Now this is a broad base and gradually you have this particular graph. Right. There is a trajectory involved here. Now slow growth if you observe at every tier what you see. This is almost similar. Gradually it is now sharpening at the top. Right. And almost male and female is equal here. Then what you observe zero growth, almost a flat one. Right. There is no trajectory here. Then what is happening in negative growth? Aging population is more and younger population is less. So these kind of trend analysis helps us to understand the age structure of the population. So if you observe rapid growing countries, Kenya, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, slow growth in US, Australia, Canada, zero growth in certain Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Austria, Italy, then what you have is the aging population, negative growth you have in Germany, Bulgaria, Hungary and so many other places. So this is what we'll look into. This way we can understand a general pattern over the globe. So if you want to look into the general pattern over the globe, you need a data as well. So what you find here in this data, the world statistics here and more developed, less developed statistics here and also Africa, Asia, Europe, Americas, North America, Oceania. So what you can observe here, how much of population is under which category. So if you observe aging population, look at the data. More developed countries, more aging population. Europe has also a lot of aging population. North America also aging population is 18, right? In comparison here, right? Then if you observe youth population, the working population 15 to 64, what you can analyze is, look at the data, 65, 66, 56, 68. So here in Africa, what you find, this working population is lesser. Rest everywhere, it's like in Asia, it's the highest, 68. That's what we look into, right? So this is the way to analyze and look at it spatially and also temporally. That's how we calculate the dependency ratio. And this is what is the measurement. Now, if you look into the world map on the basis of these data, look here, the 14 to 65 category, the population age, right? In 2015, you get this data from the Geostata, that is August 2016 data. What does it look like? Now observe carefully, the green areas and deeper green areas of the world are where this population is minimum, right? It means what? The youth population, the working population is minimum in these green areas of the world, right? And maximum population is in the deeper areas of the world and look at these colors here. So this is how we can represent it. This is where geography is there in this particular way, right? So now in India, if you observe the northern plains, more dense this area here the dependency is more as well and certain areas here in the Deccan where dependency is less so this kind of patterns can be observed that which area has more dependent population which area has more youth population so these kind of statistics helps us to understand the spatial variations across the world as well as India so now if you observe the next one in age sex composition the sex one right so number of women and men in a country is an important demographic attribute and the ratio between them we know by sex ratio right so now if you observe in certain countries like USA sex ratio is expressed by this form 
formula male population upon female population into thousand but in india and many other countries also female population is kept as numerator per male population into thousand now this is where the understanding of the ratio is important that in some countries sex ratio is unfavorable for women so we know that what is the status of women in those countries so female feticide female infanticide domestic violence against women and lower socio-economic status of women that's where female population would be lower side right that's where we observe that there is a disbalance in the sexes right so what we observe here in the world population sex ratio 102 males per 100 females was an average right then highest sex ratio in the world is recorded in latvia right 85 males per 100 females and in qatar there are 311 male per 100 females so look here just upside down right countries like latvia lithuania armenia belarus russia ukraine estonia all these countries here among the countries where largest female population is there right so this is how we look into the spatial pattern of these sexes and their distribution across the world that's important here now sex ratio is favorable for females in 139 countries of the world and unfavorable in almost 72 countries of the world that is the general trend that we have seen now china india saudi arabia pakistan and afghanistan if you observe low sex ratio is observed generally now but it was in news recently that there is a welcome trend in gender ratio and recently in this nfhs that we see national family and health survey data we see that it has risen to 1020 that is about 1020 females per thousand males in which himachal pradesh in india is doing the most commendable job right and rest everywhere also we see a increasing trend now look into rural urban composition part of the population composition that how many population live in rural areas what is there in urban areas so if you observe the different lifestyles are there associated with rural and urban so there is a divide that we say so if this is a divide we need to understand it is necessary because rural and urban lifestyles differ from each other and they have different living conditions so age sex occupational structure density of population and level of development remember these three points are very important to divide the rural and urban areas areas right so rural and urban differences in sex ratio in canada and western european countries like finland are just opposite of what is there in africa and asian countries right so that's where a developed and developing divide also we see so if you observe in western countries or developed countries males outnumber females in rural areas while females outnumber males in urban areas and why is it so because you'll find more of female population is involved in the working areas working sectors in urban areas right and just opposite in nepal pakistan and india the case is reverse right so that's what we look into the divide here now literacy is another thing that we need to understand according to literacy how we do we look at the population composition so literacy is in simple way what it is an indicator of a socio-economic development as it reveals standards of living social status of female availability of education facilities and policies of the government so levels of economic development is both cause and consequence of literacy and in simple way if you want to define literacy a person who knows to read and write according to the international definition but in india literacy rate denotes the percentage of population above seven years of age who is able to read write and have ability to do arithmetic calculations with understanding so this is where we look into the literacy so who is a literate person now you can understand but there is a attachment to it so the invention of writing that is where literature construction started in the cuneiform writing that we observed 3600 bc in mesopotamia where sumer remember the urban civilizations that happened so there it was developed and since then we have literatures of various kinds across the world in india also our literatures age back to 5000 years old so what you observe then who is a literate person and who is an illiterate person or non-literate person there has to be a definition so people who lived prior to the development of this literature right they cannot be called illiterate right so what we will call them remember there are terms like pre-literate non-literate and illiterate so let's define these words first is the societies that existed prior now these are called non-literate they are not called illiterate why because literature did not exist that's what we learn here now after the invention of writing we have the 
people who did not know the writing language but writing existed they are called preliterate and then people after the invention of writing and its proliferation across the world still if you don't learn to read and write then you are considered as an illiterate so that's the common categories of literacy now next one is what you observe is the occupational structure in occupational structure there is a, again a urban divide and a rural divide as well and a developing and developed divide as well so if you observe basic occupations we have learned in economic job the primary sector of economy, the secondary sector, the tertiary sector and the quaternary and quinary activities. So we have several activities, agriculture, forestry, fishing, manufacturing, construction, commercial, services, communication. Now what we observe, this is the world data, right? So for world, high income countries, low income countries and different areas of the world, if you observe how many people are involved where in industries, agriculture or services. Right? So you observe the world says clearly service industry is the maximum where most of the people are concerned. Right? And still there is a divide between developed and developing. So developed economy with industries can accommodate more workers in secondary, tertiary, quaternary sectors. But what is there in this particular area where economy is still in primitive ages where you'll find people engaged in primary activities more. So what we observe? These particular parts, what we observe as population composition and structure related to age composition, sex composition, literacy, occupational structure, all these things are the important attributes in order to understand the world pattern, the spatial pattern and temporal pattern of the population composition across the world. So now, when we have discussed in details about the various aspects of population composition and population characteristics, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different other aspects of demography and population geography so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and learning and do share the videos with others as well